So OpenAI has just introduced a new feature called in painting on chat GPT and it's pretty good. So let's watch this demo really quickly. Effectively, and by the way, there's no audio. I don't know why they uploaded a video without any sort of audio on YouTube. In fact, if you look at the comments inside this video, a bunch of people have commented that OpenAI should consider hiring them to add audios and videos. I mean, it's just very lazy upload and they probably didn't want it to make a lot of noise about the feature because it's a very basic feature. While the whole concept of inpainting is not new for AI generation model and DALI in general, it's new on ChatGPT and it's very interesting. So look at, let's look at this demo. You can see there's this image of a cute puppy. And then once you click on this image, you have an option on top here that allows you to select certain areas in the image. So you can see the person is selecting two areas here and he's going to add, or she's going to add posts on the image. And just like the usual generation, it's going to take some time and then generate the image for you. Obviously you need the pro version in order to use this feature because it's, you know, part of DALI image generation itself. And you will have to specifically use DALI as a custom GPT. And you will specifically have to use DALI as custom GPT in order to use this. You can see the image generation is done. It's not very, very, very good, but it's okay, right? The other thing that this seems very similar to is the Adobe Firefly. The entire platform, not just the model, is where you can select specific areas and edit specific parts of the image. It seems they are leaning in that direction, but this is not the vision they want to pursue. One of the features that they wanted to add on the platform. So in order to use this, is very simple. I actually tried it out a couple of minutes back. Click here and from this, go to Explore GPTs and then look out for DALI. And you can see there is this version of DALI by a chat GPT. Go ahead and click here and then start chatting with the model. The reason why you should use this for image generation extensively is because this also gives you an option to maintain these aspect ratios and apply specific styles on the so let's say we do a solar punk oh, no, that's too complicated let's say we do origami a monkey it's signed a glass made of origami it seems to be a pretty complex generation but let's see what we get in the generation cells i actually tried uploading one of my own images to see if i can you know basically play this up the other way around where once I get the image, I select the area and I try to inpaint my own image. But that's currently not possible. It only works on the images that you generate. So you can see these are both of the generations and I'm actually not happy with both the generations here. But let's say we want to make this better. right? So let's say we select this glass and in order to edit the, ed edit the image, you'll have the select option here now. Just go ahead and click on this and then you will have an option to increase the brush size. So brush size is basically the selection that you want to edit out from the image or make certain changes on the image, right? So we select all of the the entire glass here. Let's turn this into a tree. But this is what we call in-painting. In-painting effectively is selecting specific parts of the image to make changes to that part of the image, right? There's also this concept of out-painting where once you select this, you can say you want to out-paint image in which scenario the outside of the image will be changed and the inside will be assets. As of right now, I think we only have the in-paint feature and not the out-paint feature. So if you want to out-paint, you basically have to select the opposite. So you'll have to select the monkey and, you know, not select this area if you don't want to change this. Now, if you want to revert your selection, you can click here and you can see this undoes what you did before. By doing this, it will redo what, it, what you did before, right? So we made the selection. Now, what you have to do is on the right side, you have to type the prong. So let's say we type bonsai tree. Effectively, what I want to generate is a monkey touching something and in this scenario, it's going to be the bonsai tree. You can also add text on the image. So I was watching one of the videos that was trying this generation and I tried to see what they were doing. When they were trying, they were able to add text on the image. But I tried with a few of my generations before, I wasn't able to add text inside the image by selecting a specific area. But I'm going to be trying it again just in case I missed something out in my previous steps, right? So you can see once the image generation starts, the bottom here, it will do the exact same thing it would typically do with the other image. And you can see the new image is generated. And this is the image featuring the origami glass and the monkey accompanied by a beautifully detailed oak bonsai tree, which is not something that I was looking for. So I did select the area and you can see this is probably a bug that we detected. Now, in the input itself, you can see there's the image that we sent and a selection and then bonsai tree, but it did nothing. Let's try doing this again. 
and then this time I've kept it very simple. I've just said image of a bonsai tree. Let's see if that changes anything. In my previous generations, the basic edits were fine. But in this generation, it seems it's not really understanding what I want. Because there's no element of tree in this. It's basically monkey touching some origami structure again. Now again, if you want to edit this image, and you can see generated something else altogether. So here's what we do, right? So we click on this image again, and we click on select area again. Because the previous one clearly did not work. Go ahead and select the area again. And then this time also select some part of the monkey because we also want to give context to the image. And now we're going to say monkey touching bonsai tree. So hopefully it should now able to get the input area, which is the, you know, some context area, if not the input area where a monkey is touching something. And then based on the next part of the image, it should be able to, you know, generate the bonsai tree instead of the origami glasses that, that the monkey is trying to touch right now. If this works, I'm probably going to be trying out, you know, adding some text inside the image. I also kind of want to play around with the bonsai tree there. And you can see this one is relatively better because this glass now represents some sort of tree structure which the monkey is trying to touch. So if you actually include the object inside of the image, the generation turns out relatively better. And then what I want to do is now turn this into a complete you know, bonsai tree and not the uh, origami art here. So I'm going to be selecting the monkey as well because I want the generation to include the context as well. So a monkey touching a bonsai tree that is not an origami and touching a bonsai tree inside of a glass. So let's see how that works out. You see the image generation is now ready and this one looks way more better than the ones that we previously got in the output. So you do have to select some part of the image for it to get context as well. You know, let's try adding some text in the image and I'm going to be selecting a major part of the image because in my previous tests, I only selected some part of the image and it did not generate the proper results. You can see there is some sort of lag here and that's probably because, you know, having this selector in ChatGPT is probably consuming memory and hence causing this lag. So let's say add text on the top saying Bonsai to the No worries, it's right. So once you try and add that text, it's going to take some time again. And you can see there's no text again. This happened previously too when I tried to generate the text on the image. It just wouldn't do the trick for some reason. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me select the entire image and try really, really hard here. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to be adding text on top of the image. And I'm also going to turn the tree into a Christmas tree. Note my previous attempts on adding this text have failed miserably. So hopefully this should do the trick if it's not going to work. But that's unfortunate because if I was able to add text inside of this image, this would have been a great feature. And you can see it generated something, but clearly no text. I actually want to experiment something now. And you can see all the generations, by the way, are visible here. So let's say we want to generate an image of a crow on a motor, on a motorbike, on an empty highway. Actually, we also want to add some text on this. So I'm going to be stopping this generation. I'm going to be restarting this with text YOLO on top. Let's see if that does the trick. So I'm assuming that if the image already has text, then selecting the area and changing the text should work rather than generating text from scratch. Because I'm assuming that the model is using multiple neural networks to generate the image. One of the... Uh, neural network that is responsible to generate the text on the image is probably not triggered when you do in painting. So I'm hoping that, you know, having text up front in the image will kind of make it easier for us to play around with the image later on. But that's an again early assumption. And you can see the image is now generated. <laughs> the image is very cool. I'm just going to click here and I'm going to say change the text to Marco. Right. Let's see if that works. Because the L here came out or turned out really, really well. You can see it's almost understanding that there's an element here and it should probably complete the L by, you know, hiding some part of the L to give like a good background generation. Honestly, like this is one of the good generations I've done on DALI when it comes to text side of story. You can see now it was able to add the text on top of the image, which wasn't the case earlier. So having text in the image will allow you to change the text later on if you want to. Now, because the spelling of Marco is wrong, I'm going to be trying to regenerate the image. 
but I hope you get the point that it becomes easier once you already have some text inside of the image as opposed to when you don't have the text in the first place itself. And you can see I have the rate limit here in place which is unfortunate and that's probably going to be it for the video. I hope you learned something new especially the text part which took me quite some time to figure out. It's very useful in scenarios where you want to say generate some social media posts and add some text on top of the image. But that unfortunately only works if you already have some text in the image and you select that text to make certain changes. Plus a lot of machine learning models today make mistakes when generating text. And this is one of the good examples. You can see spelling of the Marco, spelling of Marco itself is wrong. So the feature allows you to, you know, do iterative generations where if you're not happy with the first spelling, you can select the area again. And next time around, you can tell it to regenerate the image, but this time hoping that the text generation does a good job of it. So let's see if we can try redoing it now, just for the sake of it. If it doesn't work, I think that's going to be all for the video. And it seems it's working. So let's look at this final generation and stop this here. So you can see I tried generating this uh, video and or I tried generating this image and it didn't work. So it says I have to wait three minutes before generating it and I'm, I'm mostly sure it's going to disappoint, right? So I'm going to be stopping the video now. If you have, if you guys have questions, let me know. Thank you so much and have a good day.